Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today's video is all about making an ordinary mountain bike into a hunting bike. A bike just like this into a hunting bike that's gonna help you be more successful in the woods. Hey everybody, my name is Coria and this channel, the Relentless Sportsman channel, I talk all things hunting and fishing, gear reviews, practical tips, all kinds of things in the field and on the water. I don't just hunt and fish one season, I hunt and fish all of them. So first thing you're going to notice about this is that white stuff. Yeah, it snowed a lot here lately, so I'm not going to use this anymore this season, but I have used it before it snowed and it worked really well. What I ended up purchasing is a used bike. It's just a 26 inch mountain bike. So this bike right here is a giant. I bought this for $50 used online. It was in mint condition. The tires were brand new everything worked on it. the brakes the gearing everything was perfect it was smooth and it even came with this metal rack which i'm going to talk about in just a moment that is essential because right here that's going to support your most important bit of equipment which is this milk crate but it doesn't stop there there's a couple other small little things that you're going to want to do to make your bike really nice for you for hunting this is the bike that's going to fit all different styles of hunting bull hunting and gun hunting included you're going to want a water bottle holder even if you don't put water in there which i highly recommend you do you're going to want to put something else in there. The next thing you're going to want are good lights on the front and in the back. Check this out. On the back we've got this little red flashing light. It's got a lot of features. You're going to have to put on the back of the crate because obviously on the back of your bike underneath the seat or something people won't see it when you have this fully loaded with gear. You want one with multiple features. Obviously you can keep it like that. It's going to be on dim but when I'm coming out of the woods at night I like to keep it on blinker mode because people can see you a lot easier or you can even have it on fast blinker mode like a flash mode like this. They can see that even better. Now on the front you can have a multi-purpose light like I like to use. I normally use a headlight on top like this so when I'm looking around side to side as I'm riding I can see what's next to me and in front of me but I also want a headlight on my bike handlebars. All the gear I'm going to use in this video that I've added to this bike to make it better and more functional I'm going to put in the links so you can check them out if you're interested. With this one right here this clips off my bike and it is super bright so not only can you use it as a headlight you can dim and you can have it on blank mode so people can see you. This also quickly removes off of here and you can use this as a flashlight if your flashlight dies or your headlight dies or whatever or just walking to your stand in the morning or whatever you see fit and it just easily clips back on here clips right back on snaps on there and you're good to go for the duration of your travel back to your car in the evening or out to your stand in the morning underrated on most hunting bikes that is the kickstand this kickstand right here is a really nice device you can fit it on almost any bike any size bike out there that's you know a normal size and all you need to do is have one little allen wrench and it goes on all by itself it's completely adjustable so if you want your bike standing more up straight like this if you want it leaning over more it's 100 adjustable to you and the best part is in my opinion it's light it's super strong and you can use it with big boots on i've used big old heavy boots with this thing and it doesn't matter i can still get enough contact with my boot to push it down into place and make my bike stand up straight now we need to talk about the gear and how you load it up on here even if you're a saddle hunter a hunter with a stand if you hunt on the ground or use a seat to stand on the ground or a seat to sit above the ground i've got it all figured out for you stay tuned so in here if you're going to be using a backpack that's where it needs to go so i recommend making sure you have a pack that fits inside here and make sure things in your pack can get pushed and fit inside there at the same time back back here i can compress this usually in my backpack i just have things like a knife clothes this is where it's going to go so it fits right inside there next let's put the stand on top don't worry if you're a saddle hunter i've got a solution for that as well all right so as you can see here the stand fits right on top of here this is a lone wolf assault too with the sticks i've actually used a bigger stand on there i've used an xop air raid with heavier sticks the stand is heavier too and it still works as you can see back here what i did was i made sure that the side of the platform goes right up to the edge of the crate and to secure this on there all you need are simple bungee cords so on here i've got one bungee cord holding this on this isn't going anywhere if this stand falls off this whole thing falls off and it's broken this is all you need to keep this stand on here like that i always bring an additional bungee cord along in case you want to put more things on here like a big jacket or something then you can strap this one over the entire thing but most of the time this is all you're going to need i suggest putting your stand sideways like this not the long ways because it's going to help balance it out so you're going to easily fit down any trail worth biking on in your hunting scenario All right, let's talk about this thing, the saddle. Let's see how this fits on there. It's even simpler, as you can imagine, than the hang-on stand. Now, saddle hunting can be a little tricky because it really depends if you use a ring of steps or if you use a saddle platform. Platform's gonna work in most cases because it should be able to fit inside that milk crate. If it doesn't, you can put it on top just like a hang-on stand. Now, I gotta go in the garage because it's getting a little too dark outside to demonstrate this and show this to you. If I was hunting with a ring of steps or a platform, is I would put that in there right away. In there, as in, 
on the bottom of the crate. If it happens to fit in your hunting pack, you can fit in there as well. That's what I suggest most of the time, but sometimes you go hunting and you even need a pack. Or your ring of steps, like I've got right here, and your saddle and all of your ropes, that can fit inside your pack to begin with. That's one of the reasons why we take packs, is put all of our stuff in one concealed area and then set that right in here. And that's an even simpler setup than the hang-on stand. Okay, so for the saddle setup, we've got it figured out. We've got our bag right here. I've got it strapped through here, down, clipped onto there. So it's not going anywhere. Inside here, I've got all my gear I need for saddle hunting, including my saddle and my ring of steps. And of course, a platform could go on top of this if you push this down. Okay, the last setup thing I'm gonna show you guys is what happens if you want a ground seat, like a canoe seat. Lots of people hunt out of those when they're hunting on the ground. Or what happens if you want a little tripod seat or a little hunting chair that you're gonna sit on a ridge and overlook a bottoms or a creek edge or something. What about those setups let me show you how i do that all right so for people that like to sit on the ground they have an option this is a great seat it's a canoe seat i use it for canoeing and i also use it for hunting i used this last year when i went turkey hunting but i can also use it when i go deer hunting which i think i did a couple times this year because this is so flat is you can actually put it on here in a pretty clever way where it's not going to get in the way of you getting into your pack if you need it. So what I like about this setup right here is I actually have this on the side of the crate, not on top. So if I stop and I need to access something out of here like my phone or whatever, I've actually got access to the top right here through my bag into my pack because this is off to the side. I was going to put it on the back originally, but obviously you've got this light here and that would get in the way and kind of defeat the purpose of even having a light back there to begin with. But I found that putting it on the side like this keeps it out of the way and it's easily accessible and all I do is I run a bungee strap around the crate like this. It's here, that's the connection points, and then you're good to go with the seat of this fashion, this canoe seat here. Now the other type of seat is a tripod seat. I wouldn't take a normal camping chair because it's a little too big and bulky, but this is a perfect size for deer hunting and it's really great because it's got a small back space when you're sitting on it. You can sit on this for a long time, remain comfortable. It's light, it folds up, it's compact and you can draw your bow easily because when you draw your bow obviously one of your elbows is going back behind you and it's not hitting anything like silly armrests and things like you would normally see in a camping chair when you fold this up pretty tiny it's got a thin profile now assuming that you're gonna have a hunting pack or a backpack with you all the time when you're hunting what I would do with this is lay this across your pack this way you don't want it going this way so putting this across your mail crate is probably the best way to do this and it's not too wide it's the perfect perfect size. I love using this to hunt with a rifle or a bow for deer hunting. And as usual, you take a bungee, fasten it down. There are a ton of different contact points on a milk crate. Just make sure that this is on here. It's not going to go anywhere. All right. So one thing we didn't mention yet is what do you do with your weapon as you travel into your deer hunting location? That's a good question. If I'm on here with my rifle, as you can see, it's attached to me. I don't worry about it because I've got a sling. I put it across my shoulder and I ride with it that way. To tell you the truth, I haven't used this bike with a bow yet. I've only used it with a rifle. But what I'm going to do next season when I use it with a bow is I'm gonna get an attachment that goes on here where my bow can go across the handlebars. That's gonna make it really simple for me to get in and out of the woods without having to figure out a way how to put a sling on my bow to carry on my shoulders like I do with a rifle. There's a lot of videos on this, but how I attach this crate to this rack down here, this metal rack that supports the crate, is really simple. I use zip ties. Each zip tie has a contact point with the crate and with the black rack underneath it. And I position it so that the zip ties are going in different ways. What that does is it creates a really stable, secure connection between your crate and the rack underneath it. The reason why I use a bike when I go on public land is for one reason alone. I want to save as much time as I can and be in the woods as long as I can. There are certain places on public land where I can walk for an hour or two just walking with a stand on my back, sweating, going into my hunting location. And to me, that's a complete waste of time. The last time I used this bike, I turned an hour and a half walk into a 15 minute bike ride. Now there's another question that I'm sure some of you out there are wondering. Why not buy a really expensive fat tire bike so you can go in the snow and different terrains and it's more comfortable and it's better quality. Some of those fat tire bikes that come with a motor, those electric bikes, those can start at $1,500 and I saw one the other day online for $8,000 for a bike. Maybe you don't wanna go the same route that I went, super cheap, $80 for a setup for a hunting bike, but hopefully this video has inspired you to do something that's good for you with a bike when it comes to deer hunting. Stay tuned for another video coming up. If you like this video, if you learned something new especially, give that a like, subscribe, share this video if you think somebody else could benefit from it. And I really appreciate it. Thanks for helping the channel grow. Thanks for spending this time with me. Bye-bye.